You know God is omnipotent, omnipresent, He's all glory, He's got everything, He is everything. <clears throat> so you would think, oh, then, you know, God has no problems. Oh, but His problems are infinite. The glory of God is that, although the problems are infinite, He solves them all. That's the glory of God. Ephesians 1, 15 through 23 puts it this way, filling all, in all. That's how he solves all the problems. He, infinite God, creates. The minute he creates, everything is short, even if perfect, it's small. Okay, that's the problem. Anything God creates is insufferably lower than him, even if perfect. It's an infinity finity dichotomy. I spent a lot of time on that in my web pages. That's the real problem. You know, we typically underestimate and misdefine the problems of wealth, even down here. To be wealthy, to be famous, to be royal in particular, is the worst life possible. Because everybody's after you because you live in a fishbowl and here you know you thought that the fame and the money would buy you nice things well yeah it does but they come at a price and everybody who's lower than you now thinks that they have the right to pick on you you know the atheist is always picking on God oh God exists he's bigger he's bad he must be you know he must be bad because he's bigger than me that's really the atheist problem that's why he denies God but we Christians are no different we're constantly assigning to God our own little petty standards. And that's the way it is down here too. People who are wealthy are constantly viewed as being something they're not. Their wealth is constantly viewed as something it's not. In fact, the wealth is a big pain in the neck. Fame is a big pain in the neck. Being royal is a big pain in the neck. Okay, so if God creates, he's marrying a big pain in the neck. That's the problem with being God. Why don't you fix this? Why don't you do that? And you have to listen to this. I mean, just think about it. Every time you stub your toe. All right? God has to see that forever. Why? Because he's got the wealth of omniscience. Why would he want to make us? I yell at him about that every day. Why would you put up with us? And that's why I don't like this doctor. Because it means that putting up with what's small and in our case it's it's not so much the smallness but the fact that we want to be petty and ugly it's not so much our sins but that we like them and it's really not even that it's our disbelief in God the only sin really in the Bible is unbelief all sin comes from it all the behavioral sins but it's really not believing in God Okay, and God has to live with that forever. Why? Because he's total wealth. That's the problem of it. Okay, have I set the stage now? The problem of the Christian way of life is that we inherit Christ. The Lord is my portion. That's in what, Jeremiah somewhere. We inherit Christ, so we inherit everything Christ is and has. That's what you'll see in the book of Hebrews. Okay, what does he have and what is he? Well, Isaiah 53, 12, he inherits everything. He's king of kings, lord of lords. He's God and his deity. So he's already royal that way. Okay, but he beat Satan. That's Kata Melchizedek. That's Hebrews 5. That's pre-Israel. That's Psalm 110, 1 and following. He inherits everything. Satan had a morning star title. That's wordplay in the Greek and the Hebrew of Ephesians, uh, Psalm 110. Christ wins it from Satan. That's where the wordplay is in Psalm 110. Okay, then that means he owns everything and everything is lower than him. And hostile. And ugly. And like a dead battery. And he threw himself down twice, basically first time it created, 
And secondly, to pay for the sins, just basically paying for the whole cost of creation. Because if it's going to be free, it's going to sin, so it's the whole cost of it. Okay, so he inherits what? A bunch of ugly, petty, <laughs> hostile. Got to have absolute love to want to do that. Love for Father in order to pay for it. And love for us despite ourselves. You know, Romans 5.8. So what has to happen to us? We got basically two inheritances, okay? Every human being has a salvation inheritance. Okay? God elected it. Christ paid for it. That's what the theme of the book of Hebrews is about. Okay, but we can elect against the will. God's will, God's payment billion dollars to set up for every human being born, so to speak. Okay, but not every human being born wants the, wants the inheritance. Beneficiary can always elect against the will. That's first inheritance. The second inheritance is everybody has a potential title as king. If you learn to think the way Christ does. It's Ephesians 4.13 then you become a king over all those people who didn't elect to think the way Christ does which most Christians don't because they're busy with their jealousy over someone who's better than them or someone who seems to be getting away with something kings can't afford to be petty now why be a king at all? I mean, Christ is king of everybody, why have sub-kings? Because the idea of kingship is parental. The idea of kingship is love toward God, upward, and love toward your kingdom, downward. Just like Christ threw himself down for us and threw himself down for Father. So that way this whole learning, this whole rapport is really what it's about. Rapport with God means getting the character of God in you, filling all in all, the Holy Spirit filling you, filling you with himself and his power, and filling you with doctrine, filling you with Bible, learning and living on Bible, that makes your soul change, it makes your soul become king size, you lose your pettiness, you lose your religiosity, you know, you lose all those childish ideas as you learn and live on Bible, with this Holy Spirit enabling it, so that you become king sized in your soul, you become mature, you become grace-oriented, you become relaxed, and you inherit king-size problems to go with that, because now all these people you, you know are lower than you. And on top of that, because you're representing Christ while you're down here, whether you grow or not, everything that happens in the world is your fault. If you're growing in Christ, it's your fault, so God blesses the world. If you're not growing in Christ, it's your fault, so God sends tornadoes, earthquakes, blah, blah, blah. Israel had to live with that. Go look at Levit Leviticus 26. They were responsible for everything. Okay, that's the contract. You're a king in training. Your name is Crown Prince. Put your name here. So I'm Crown Prince Brain. So if I don't learn the royal protocol, if I don't learn the doctrine right, and that's not even enough. But if I don't learn it rightly, then I'm held accountable, and people around me are going to get cursed. It's my fault, not theirs. It's never the unbeliever's fault. But learning it rightly isn't it either, you know, just you parade around, oh, I'm, I know this doctrine, and you don't. Okay, well, you just flunked. Because the real purpose of learning Bible is to learn to think like Christ and to have a relationship with God, to be king-sized in your soul so you can have rapport with God, at which point you'll be like those angels in Revelation 4 wanting to throw down your crown instead of lord it over the way Christians do down here. See, that's the problem. The minute you were born again, you were in Christ, which means you inherit his problem. And what was his problem down here? He was so big. So that's what this series is going to be about. It's the problem of being royal. It's the problem of being in training to be a king. It's a problem of parenting. 
it's a problem of being responsible for everything. The minute you were born, it's all your fault. And you, you how can you know? You're totally wealthy. That's the real problem of the Christian life, and the Book of Hebrews outlines that. It's all because of his victory against Satan. For Psalm 110.1, which is an entirely different contract from the one with Israel. So that's what we'll be going over in the book of Hebrews. So smile. Your name is Crown Prince. <laughs> and if you're not learning Bible to learn to love God, then honey, everything's your fault. Isn't that wonderful? You see why I have problems with this doctrine? Bye for now.